Yo, what's up guys? You're watching CSS for Beginners Lesson 53 and this video is going to be part 2 of the CSS website build. Wow. Alright gang, so we're just going to start off where we left in the last video and if you remember, I showed you we had this simple HTML file here and we started to style it with these styles and that gave us this nicely styled navbar right here. So we're just going to carry on and crack on with the rest of the page. So. The next thing I want to do is just neaten up this image here. If you look to the very right of it, it's got this very thin white line and that's the background under here peeping through because the image is not the full width. So we're just going to make this image here stretch all the way across. So to do that, I want to find it in my HTML. It's this image right here and it's within the lead banner ID. So we'll copy that, come down here and we'll target it in the CSS and we'll say we want the image within that lead banner div and we're just going to say width 100% and then that scoots it right across gives it 100% width of this wrapper so it's taking up all the room and we no longer have that thin white bar at the end cool so next thing we want to do is come down here and style these things up and to do that we're going to go after this shop div because everything's within the shop so we're going to grab that copy it and paste it down here and the first thing I want to do is give this a margin of 30 pixels and then zero left and right so I'm just going to give it this space in here and at the bottom here so it's away from both banners uh, the next thing I want to do is give it a text align property and we're going to say center and now everything scoots into the center there. That's really cool. So text align not only affects text when you've got that inside your div, but also images. So it centralizes everything within this column. So that's really cool. So the next thing I want to do is style up that product name right here. So to do that, I'm just going to give us some room down here. And I'm going to say shop h2 dot product name because up here you can see it's h2 and it's got a class of product name so that's what we're grabbing there and we'll say we want that to have a few styles and the first one is going to be a font size oops font size 16 pixels so we just reduce that in size a little bit and we're going to give a margin bottom of zero because we want it to be right up against the price when we style that and that's all we need to do for that the next thing I'm going to do is grab the price. So that's a span tag and it's got a class of price. And let's display that first of all as block. And then what that does, my friends, is because we're giving it a block display type, is it's going to take up the whole row. Remember, block level elements take up a whole row and inline elements are stacked side to side. That's why it was stacked side to side with this and this initially because these three are all by default inline elements. So we've given that a display of blocks so it's taking up now the whole row and it's forcing these two onto the next line, which is cool because we want this to have its own row. So the next thing we want to do is increase that font size. We're going to say we want it to be a lot larger at 58 pixels and then that's going to make it roughly the same width as this thing here so it looks nice and neat. All right, so the next thing we want to do is grab this link here and make it into a button. So to do that, we're going to say shop. And then it's an A link and it's got a class of add hyphen to hyphen bag. And that's this link right here. So let's style this up. And the first thing we want to do, again, is give it a display of block. That's going to give it the whole row and force the stars onto the next line. Then we'll give it a color of that beige color again, which is, if I can remember properly, 8F746C, I think. Yep, there we go. Cool. Then we'll give it a text transform property of uppercase. Make them all capitals. Yep. And we'll give it a font size of 12 pixels, make it a little bit smaller. That's fine. Text decoration of none because we want to remove that underline. If I just scoot off this, you can see it's currently underlined. We don't want that, so we'll just put none. And that takes away the underline. Uh, we'll give it some padding. We'll give it 10 pixels top and bottom. Left and right, I'm going to give it zero because we're going to make this a definite width. So we don't need to give it the padding on the left and right. Um, the next one is going to be a border. And we're going to say two pixels solid 
and we're going to say that same beige color again. So what was that? This this thing here. Let's copy and paste that because I'm being a bit lazy, and pop that there. Yep. And then we'll give it a width of 210 pixels. So if I just scoot off this a minute, you can see currently it's got that default width of 100% because it's a block level element because of this here. So by default, it's taking up the full width. We don't want that width. We want to give it a definite width, which is going to be kind of this size here, the same width as this and this. So that's roughly about 210 pixels. But now you can see it's gone off to the left over here. Now I don't want that, I want it to be in the middle. So remember from the margin lesson, I showed you that trick. And also in part one of this tutorial, where we say margin, we'll give it 30 pixels top and bottom. No, we won't, we'll give it 20 pixels. 20 pixels top and bottom. And then for the left and right, we just say auto, and then that scoots in right to the center. Okay, so that's all we wanna do for that button. Now it looks nice and cool. Um, I would like a hover effect. So let's put one of those in. Let's get this and add a pseudo class to it. Now we've covered pseudo classes, remember, it's just a colon that we put after our selector, and the particular pseudo class we want for this is the hover one, because we're giving it a hover effect. And we'll just change the color to white, and the background of the button to that beige color, which is 8F746C. Cool, so let's check this out now. Oops, that's not working. Oops, I didn't, I didn't put the background property in, that's why. Okay, there we go, cool. So, there's our button. Um, the stars don't really need styling, they're all in the middle, they've got that margin there. Uh, this bottom image does have that thin gap there where the white's poking through, so we're gonna get rid of that as well. Now, that image is within this div, the footer banner, so let's copy that and give that a rule down here, and then we'll say the image within it is gonna be a width of 100%, and boom. There we go, guys, that is completely done. How long has that taken me? What, seven minutes in this lesson and about 10 minutes in the last lesson? So in under 20 minutes, I've styled that with CSS and made a website. The HTML took about five minutes. This took about 20 at most, so 25 minutes. We've got ourselves a one-page website. That is how simple it is, guys. Um, if you have any questions, obviously feel free to comment down below. Otherwise, take this, go out, mess with it, make your own website so you can do it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy or please like or share. I'll see you guys then.